Volvo's new EX60. Now, guys, I actually owned the XC60, so the old internal combustion version of this car. It was actually a really good car. We had it for about maybe seven years and really had no major problems ever. But the world has moved on since then. And the new version of this EV now will get more than 800 kilometers of range. In fact, 810 kilometers. So that's about 500 miles of range. Now, I'm not talking CLTC here. I'm talking WLTP. This is a massive, massive figure. So what are the details and when can you actually purchase this car? Now, of course, the parent company of Volvo is Geely. And we do have kind of some some idea on the specs for this car, although not everything has been revealed yet. Although I can say I have been to the uh, Volvo car manufacturing facility in China and I've seen the vehicles coming off the production line. It is the same factory that manufactures Zika and Polestar as well. But first, hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Thank you to those of you who have become YouTube members. I really appreciate your support because... It enables me to make these videos. If you can become a YouTube member, that would be great. I'll put a link in the description below because that will help me continue to really do this full time. This will be the longest range car in many countries around the world, including Australia, the EX60. And it's going to have charging speed, I believe, of around 500 kilowatt or 480 kilowatt, similar to the Zika 7X. And you know, which makes sense considering it's basically the same platform. Claimed range is 810 kilometers WLTP. That's more than any other EV on sale here in Australia. And it, I think it's not more than the Lucid, the Lucid with the big battery in the United States, but uh, and probably not more than the Chevy Silverado EV with that massive 200 kilowatt hour battery. But for a, an EV that's you know got a relatively normal sized battery, it would be the longest range EV in the States as well. We've been told, right, that um, you can add 340 kilometers of range after a 10-minute charge. Um, that is outside of China. I think in China, though, it charges even more quickly than that. So that's like a, a, a figure. If you can find a 450 kilowatt charger in your country, you should be able to add about 340 kilometers of range in 10 minutes, which is massive. Now, you would think that... The range for this car would be for the for a real-wheel drive version. You know, pretty much always when you add an extra motor, you get less range. So the longest range Tesla model, well, in fact, the longest range Tesla model in the world right now is the Tesla Model 3, the long-range version, real-wheel drive. It has 750 kilometers of range. This beats that by 60 kilometers, plus it's all-wheel drive. So that seems pretty remarkable to me. I'm going to guess that it's going to have a, a massive, massive battery. And to give you some context here, the BMW iX3, I believe the battery in that vehicle is about 105 kilowatt hours and it delivers 805 kilometers of range. The iX3 is a direct competitor to the EX60. So these two are going to duel it out. You would think considering the iX3 needs that size battery, that it would have probably about, probably about 100 kilowatt hour battery. Now, I believe it's very likely it's using the new Shenzhen uh, arc battery architecture from CATL, and I believe the next generation version has much higher pack density, not, not necessarily cell density, but they've been able to actually change the architecture of the pack that it, so it has about 30% more pack utilization. That's probably the, the battery platform that this, is, this vehicle is going to come with, considering the Zika 7X, which this car is based on, has that same platform, but I believe generation one, not generation two. So generation two should unlock this kind of range. Both the BMW and the Volvo are gonna compete with the new Mercedes-Benz GLC, which has EQ technology providing 713 kilometers of range, not that much really. The Tesla Model Y, it has 600 kilometers of range, but the new Tesla Model Y, the cheapest version, now has 660 kilometers of range. And there is a Model Y in China that has 700 kilometers of range. CLTC, it's more than that, but it ends up being about 700 kilometers uh, WLTP. So range for electric cars is drastically improving. I mean, well beyond, I think, what we have seen in 2025 
battery range for a lot of mainstream EVs would, will increase enormously in 2026. That will help swing more buyers to EVs, I think. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you let me know in the comments. Now, Volvo haven't really shown this car off. We've only seen a few little images. We do know it's on the new SPA3 scalable platform architecture. Now, yeah, this architecture is a little bit different, I admit, to the, the Zika 7X. And ways that it's different, let me explain. Uh, the architecture itself is, to be honest, not really that much different. It's very similar. In fact, the biggest differences are that this uses gigacasting. So the weight will be much lower. So this car should be able to lose about 300 kilograms compared to existing Geely cars built with similar size batteries, similar size cars, yeah, similar size EVs. It'll lose around probably 300 kilograms, maybe even 400. And the reason... The front section of the car, the entire front, will be built using one big gear casting piece, the rear section, one large gear casting piece, and then that'll be joined together basically by the structural battery pack. And that will enormously um, reduce weight, improve efficiency, and even improve rigidity and performance in a crash. So that's the big difference. Tesla really has, to be fair, completely revolutionized the way we make cars now. More manufacturers are doing this. Toyota said they're going to be doing this in 2027. Uh, I believe Hyundai, Hyundai, they have decided to do gear casting as well. There are numerous manufacturers now moving to this way of making a car. And because this is happening, range will continue to improve. The efficiency of EVs will improve and the weight of electric cars will also continue to go down. You can see the difference. Look at something like a Kia EV5. The EV5 is quite heavy, or the BYD, C, the BYD C Line 7, same thing. They're both very heavy. Neither of those vehicles uses gigacasting. And you can see the difference between a car that does when you've got a Tesla Model Y, same size car, and it's literally 300 to 400 kilos lighter. Same thing with the Xpeng G6. It also uses gigacasting. It's also around 300 kilograms lighter. In fact, nearly up to 400, depending on the model you're comparing. So that's the biggest change here. Now, BMW, they're, they're doing something. I'm not sure if they're using gear casting, but I do know that their new batteries are, they are a large, very large cylindrical cell, and they're actually slightly bigger than Tesla's 4680 cylindrical cells, and therefore the energy density of those batteries is around 30% higher. So they're approaching it from that angle, improve energy density. Volvo is approaching it from the angle of reduced vehicle weight by Make, making the big changes to how, the way that they make cars. Historically, Volvo's cars, to be honest, have been heavy. They've been heavier than rivals. This should enable them to change that situation. Now, apparently, I'm hearing that the EX60 will get the new developed in-house. It's called Huge In Core Computing System. And Google built, will be built in with its Gemini Artificial Intelligence Assistant. So that, could, that should really be... A big difference. The other thing is, if it's going to get Gemini AI, it could improve as Gemini continues to get updated. I mean, Gemini is updating, Google's updating Gemini every few months. Imagine if you get those updates in your car. That would be really cool. In car tech in the EX60 is going to be powered by the Snapdragon cockpit platform from Qualcomm, which is more powerful than any in any other previous Volvo so far. NVIDIA's drive platform will run the drive operating system to power the driver assist and active safety tech. So NVIDIA is saying that their new chip is capable of potentially full self-driving. Does that mean you'll get it in your Volvo EX60? I'm sure a lot of people on Facebook will tell you it will because you know if they buy it, they'll say it will. Very common. But the answer is absolutely not. No, it's going to take a lot more work to get there. We're many years away from that. Does that mean your car might be capable of doing full self-driving in the future? No, probably not. I think I think there's a little way to go. In fact, a long way to go, even for cars that are equipped with NVIDIA's new full self-driving chips. Still good though. It still is going to massively improve your, you know, kind of like your Tesla autopilot. That's what I'd call it, what you're going to get. It'll be a, probably a, a, an even better version of that. Now, it's worth pointing out as well that Volvo have dropped LiDAR. They have completely got rid of LiDAR. They had a big contract with Luminar, the LiDAR company, who I think have gone bankrupt now because Volvo canceled their contract. So these new Volvos will not have LiDAR. I think, guys, this will be a really compelling car. Big changes. I mean, big increase in range, uh, gigacasting, structural battery pack they already have. But the gigacasting change is a really, really big change. Plus, going, moving to the NVIDIA 
their new semi full self driving chip will also improve the software as well, I think, or the car's ability at least to deliver some really good advanced driving technology. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.